Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma bar habati fillah a question was asked assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh I wanted some advice regarding praying behind someone who pronounces the last word of Surah Al-Fatiha as Valin as Valin with a heavy ba which is done by making their tongue touch their front upper teeth. The imam knows how to say the baad, uh, so he can pronounce it ba, ba lin, the correct way, but sometimes chooses not to. <clears throat> I've asked him about it, and he told me he knows it's a baad, but he said something like reciting both ways works. He continues to pronounce it with uh, a da. Uh, also, I heard him in Kathir wrote something about this type of pronouncing in his tafsir. Maybe if you want to look into it. So is my prayer valid behind him? Is there any sayings of the Salaf in regards to praying behind a person who recites like this? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with ilm and nafi, ruskin tayyibu, ilm and mutakabin, and bless the questioner with such a fantastic uh, ilm, knowledge-based question. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be able to... Uh, assist one another and benefit as this benefited me by having to go and look into the issue uh, after rereading the question a couple of times and looking into what the aqwal of Ahla Ilm is regarding this matter. And one of the things I came across and that we should be aware aware of when reading uh, the Quran, especially in Salat, and that there's two types of mistakes. There is a uh, uh, a lahan uh, and jelly, and the lahan it changes the meaning. So if you change the meaning, meaning that uh, you you change a harf, and it changes the meaning of the a word, you know, and the meaning of the ayat, then this is an unacceptable mistake. The other mistake is of lesser uh, import, that it uh, is still a mistake. However, if it doesn't change the meaning, then uh, this would, you know, keep, uh, this would, uh, a person's salat would main, remain uh, valid. So, very important to know and understand that in general. Then there's all kind of other masail. For example, for those of us who are new Muslims, maybe we'll look into some of those issues later that cannot pronounce, uh, you know, are new to learning Arabic or new to learning the prayer and cannot pronounce uh, the ayat correct, correctly. And then who is the imam if everyone is, is jahil or everyone is ignorant? In, in that respect, with regards to reading the Fatiha appropriately, and there's all kind of other Masail. But let's get to your Mas'ala. So what I understood previously when reading this, I thought you meant uh, a, with a Del, Dalin, and I've never heard this, but we do know that some of our brothers and sisters from various countries, that they uh, read it with a Ba, you know, instead of a Bad. And... This uh, is due to difficulty in pronounce, pronouncing those letters. And those haruf are very close. So these are, I would say, they are natural mistakes for those who are unlearned in tajweed. And that it's very important that we do learn and how to distinguish those haruf. But getting back to your question, what does uh, the ulama say? What do the ulama say with regarding... Uh, to this and Ben uh, Othamin has some beautiful details but I think we'll just stick with what the the end uh, result of this mas'ala is so Ibdal abbaad fi qawlihi ta'ala walabbaalin bi ba so by changing uh, in uh in Surah Al-Fatiha, those two haruf, you know, what is the hukum? What is the ruling? So that's basically what they're asking, and that's what I understand from the question. 
تصيح صلاة من إبدال الضاد في الآيات بضع. So first, the Sheikh mentions that it's it's correct. It's correct for the one who changes these two حروف. وهو قول. So this is the statement, meaning that there are some ulama that differ with regards to this. But he said, وهو قول أكثر الحنفية. Most of the Hanafi ulama uh, have this uh, opinion that this is permissible. وهو مشهور من مذهب حنابلة. And it's also well known from the madhab of the Hanabila, meaning not all the Hanbali scholars hold this view, but it's well known, it's mashhur. Uh, this is what I understand from this statement. وَتَصْحِي مِنْ أَقْوَالَ الْمَلَكِيَ And also, وَصَحِي مِنْ أَقْوَالَ الْمَلَكِيَ So the Malakiyah also hold that this is, uh, this salat is sound, that this is permissible. Uh, and this is one of the views of the Shafi'iyah, of the um, Shafi'i scholars. And he says, وَاَخْتَارَهُ ibn تَيْمِيَ And Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah also uh, chose this view, held this view. ibn Kathir, also Imam ibn Kathir, as you mentioned, also said that it was, it was sound. Uh, ibn Baz, in our contemporary times, uh, Imam bin Baz rahimahumullah jami'an all, all these great imams uh, of the sunnah uh, he also held this view wa ibn Uthaymin rahmatan wasi'a also held this view and so this is what ibn Uthaymin brings some beautiful details but we're not going to uh, spend the time and go into that and he says but this is what ibn Uthaymin said and and so he says وَذَلِكَ لِتَقَارَبِ الْمَخْرَجَيْنِ وَسُعُبَةِ الْتَفْرِيقِ بَيْنَهُمَا So in the reason for this, the reason he says that it, it's sound, obviously it doesn't change the meaning, and also uh, it's due to the, uh, that these two haruf, or these two letters, if you will, that they leave the mouth in a very close place uh that they're they're very close those haruf so it's very difficult to distinguish it takes a lot of practice in tajweed and and really uh you know and especially for those tongues which are foreign to arabic uh so it's very difficult to distinguish between the two so you know it's slight it's slight so the shahid is your salat is uh, sound, and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.